Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here on this hodgepodge of an episode where I want to do some more of these maintenance projects on the new tools that we've acquired, such as the forge and such as the power hammer. You'll remember last time we tried the forge, we couldn't quite get it up to temperature, and the hypothesis was we couldn't get enough air at a high enough pressure to get the amount of gas that is required to mix properly and burn at the right temperature. So trying to get this forge up and running is objective number one. Isn't all right, we're gonna work on the forge. <laughs> well done. So I was given some very good advice by a blacksmith by the name of Matthew Harris. And that was that a bouncy castle blower is gonna be putting out more volume as well as more pressure. Now, I use bouncy castle blowers on the solid fuel forges that I used to use. Until I switched to gas, I burnt exclusively coke. I ran those forges off of these things because you needed a ton of pressure to get that coke burning at the right temperature. They use these to inflate inflatable houses and jumping things and what forth. And so they're kind of meant to run for a while. And the fortunate thing is they're extremely inexpensive. This model is more powerful than anyone I've ever had. It supposedly pulls back about 10 amps at 120 volts. I am a little nervous that it might be quite loud though. That's okay, there's always solutions around that. The most important thing is we have a hot forge. Here we go. That is loud. That is a lot of air. Anywho. That's a good bit of air. A good bit of air. Now, I've also been told by a lot of you fine folks that it might not just be the blower that's the issue, but simply the way that it's all piped in. Many of you have suggested not having a 90 degree bend and having a larger diameter pipe would increase the result from the blower. What we're gonna do now is light the forge and see if this one change does anything. Try and make one easy change at a time before we go unscrewing all of that stuff which is going to be a much larger time commitment. All right, so the flame is just being thrown right against the back wall, super unstable. I don't like that. It might be too much oxygen. I covered up the blower with some paper on the inlet. The flame's a little better, it's still really strange though. Tearing off pieces of phone book to shove in there so that we can keep the flame ignited. Okay, I've got the oxyfuel torch in there. We'll see if that keeps the flame ignited. After much fiddling, this is as good as I can get the flame, which is not good. It's barely lit. That's dangerous, not good. That's a real shame. Uh, bouncy castle blur didn't work, but it doesn't seem to make sense. It doesn't That doesn't look like I would have guessed it would look without enough pressure or volume. So it's not making a whole lot of sense in my head as to why it's like that. Okay, it's been going about 20 minutes and I think it's about enough time for me to be pretty uh, certain this isn't going to be getting a whole lot hotter. What's strange is that even after it got hot, that flame is still only coming out of a third of that ribbon burner. So I don't know if maybe there's an issue with the ribbon burner now. Maybe, you know, from heating and cooling the refractory has cracked. I have no idea. It didn't seem like that should be an issue with the blower. But, Big Forge, still not working like it should. I'm actually really kind of getting tired trying to fix that problem. And fixing that problem is starting to make me feel a little down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get onto this treadle here, we're gonna cut off this plate and we're gonna try and modify this setup so it suits me a little better. Unfortunately it's not just welds on this side, we've got to take the whole treadle off and flip it over. It looks like there's welds on the back side of it.
That's such an improvement. Tiny change. And that feels so much better. The only real difference is, is instead of having the plate on the bottom angled up, it's on the top angled down. Because I want to get as close into the power hammer. So by having just one plate right there, means my left foot can actuate that treadle real easy by grabbing on here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Pink treadle, yes indeed. I am just thrilled with this. I was out of orange and this is the next best thing, but in fact, I think it's the first best thing. That's a hell of a pink job. I don't think we can truly finish that treadle without using the power hammer, seeing how it works. So I'm gonna light the forge and make some power hammer tooling. There we go. While the forge heats up, I wanna hang out a little bit. With the doggo. Hello, Yogo, how are you? Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? I'm gonna do a little bit of training. On the anvil reveal video, a whole lot of you suggested that the noise and the sparks were gonna be dangerous for Yoga, and that's absolutely right. It's really exciting that we've managed to socialize her to being fine with loud, scary noises, but you were all very much on point. We've gotta protect her ears, just as we have to protect our own. And so, what I'm gonna do we're gonna get her used to wearing some hearing protection. These are earmuffs specifically for dogs. But of course, I wanna make sure that Yoga gets a positive association with this tool, this thing, because this won't go well if I just throw these on her and we call it good. Touch. Good girl, well done. So I'm gonna play a little game of uh, touch with her, get her to realize that touching this is good. Touch. Yes, good girl. Okay, I'm gonna put them on her. Yes, good girl! Well done! Good, good, wait. Wait. Good girl, good girl, good girl. Yes, good girl! Good girl, good girl. Because these are going to have to be tight on her, I'm going to get her used to having some pressure with them. Yes, good girl! And all positive association with it. Good girl. You tighten them up for the first time. Well done. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Yes, sit. Good. Speak. Good girl. Speak. Good girl. Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? Oh, great. Oh, good girl. Well done.
lot has happened, and I think I just got tired of the sound of my own voice. And I just got making, and that actually felt really good. I apologize that indeed it was probably a little bit confusing what I was working on. I was working on a whole lot of stuff. I made this bottom swage from two inch round mild steel, which I used to make this very crooked and off center head of a power hammer flatter that still needs to be ground. I then forged out a handle for that flatter, cut some two inch H13, and forged a rather large punch. I then used the swage again to make this large top fuller for the power hammer. And in all of that forging, not once did I hear the ram hit the top of the cylinder cover, which is incredibly exciting, because it means the last time that I had it hit the cylinder cover, when I was really trying to make it hit the cylinder cover, I was able to give the power hammer an input in the treadle that was clearly not normal to normal work. Not only that, but forging with the pink treadle has been a treat. What I'm after when using the treadle is not having to think about it. It being an effortless connection between me and the power hammer. This small modification changed so much. This power hammer is turning into a dear friend. On a much sadder note, back in the UK, John Nicholson, who runs Massey Forging, they sustained a huge fire which has burnt down their workshop. As you might remember from the Power Hammer repair videos, John is one of the people that gave me some incredible advice on helping to work with this Power Hammer, and he's an incredibly skilled Power Hammer mechanic and Massey Forging. They refurbish Power Hammers and industrial forging equipment. Now, as a blacksmith, it is always in the back of your mind, and it's always that kind of nightmare about having a workshop burn down, and that is just a terrible, terrible thing. To lose everything to one of your most useful tools that is fire. That's a sad way to lose your workshop. Anyway, I'm sure he's appreciated some words of support, and not only that, he has a raffle for a knife that he made, a really beautiful kitchen knife, and I'm gonna leave a link to the uh, Instagram post that shows how to enter yourself in that raffle. It's only five pounds a spot, and you can enter as many spots as you want. I'm extremely grateful to you all for having watched this episode. Be sure to stay tuned for our live shows. We're doing some live shows again, which is just such a thrill, so much fun, and so be sure to check those out. You can find out when they're happening by following me on Instagram and turning on your notifications down below here on YouTube. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you following along as we did some, some real fun work overall. Bye-bye.